Today on the newscast, two major developing stories that we're following. Vladimir Putin invites thousands of fighters from the Middle East to join his side in Ukraine. Plus, Iran plotting the assassination of a former Trump administration official on U.S. soil. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We are following two major developing stories for you that the mainstream media, surprise, surprise, is largely ignoring, but which have major ramifications for the Russian war in Ukraine and also for the Middle East and potentially that disastrous Iran nuclear deal. But we want to start today in Moscow. A major story, again, Vladimir Putin is calling for thousands of volunteer fighters from the Middle East to join Russian forces in Ukraine. Now, Putin made the statements today during a televised security meeting with security officials, which was televised on Russian state TV. The Russian defense minister, Sergei Shogai, was speaking to Putin, and he mentioned to the Russian president that some 16,000 volunteers from the Middle East are ready and willing to come to Ukraine and assist the Russian military in what these Middle Eastern fighters deem a liberation movement, a battle for the liberation of Eastern Ukraine from the Ukrainian people. Shogai threw it out there and Putin responded right away and said, bring them on. If they want to join us, they are more than welcome Again, we reported earlier this week on the newscast on Monday, I believe. You can check it out here in our archives. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time we post a new video. Again, the kind of news you're just not hearing in the mainstream media, and it matters to you. But we posted about fighters from Syria traveling to Ukraine. They are already there, reportedly, on the ground, Syrian fighters alongside Russian forces. Now, these are battle-hardened. Syrian fighters with obviously over a decade of experience in urban warfare, guerrilla warfare, warfare in close quarters, house-to-house fighting, hand-to-hand combat during that bloody Syrian civil war. And that's the major reason Putin is inviting them to join the fight in Ukraine. So we know Syrians are already there, mercenary-style fighters, and thousands more now potentially from the Middle East, the world's most chaotic, most volatile region, joining the war in Eastern Europe. Europe, Folks, to my mind, this just ratchets things up to a dangerous new level. And the big question here is, okay, we know fighters have come from the battlefields of Syria. But if thousands more, in the words of the Russian defense minister, are volunteering, he mentioned from across the Middle East, Syria, yes, but from across the region, Does that mean that we could see Iranian and Hezbollah fighters getting involved in Ukraine? I do not think it is a stretch to suggest that as a possibility. Look, Russia over the past few years, since Russian forces entered Syria in September 2015, we have documented this many times here on the newscast, Russian forces have fought side by side, aligned openly with the Iranian regime, and Hezbollah in Syria, not to mention the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. All three, by the way, probably Israel's three greatest enemies when you look at it. Assad, Iran, and Hezbollah, of course, throw Hamas and Islamic Jihad in that mix, but Russia openly aligned with them. And when you think about it, Russian forces essentially bailed Assad out along with Iran and Hezbollah. Look, Assad in 2013, 2014, early 2015, He was on the ropes, and ISIS and various jihadi groups and other rebel forces were ascendant in Syria, and it looked like Assad was back on his heels to the point where Qasem Soleimani, the not-so-dearly departed terror master from Iran, more on him in a minute, traveled to Moscow twice to meet with Vladimir Putin and Russian officials in in the middle of 2015, I should say, and implored Russia to come on down to Syria and help out Russia's longtime ally, uh, the Assad regime. And that's exactly what Russia did. And guess what? They haven't gone anywhere. They are there to stay, at least in their mind. So Russia did that. They helped bail Assad out, helped him to prevail in that civil war. Not only that, Russia 
has Iran's back and then some at the negotiating table in Vienna as these Iran nuclear talks unfold. So Russia may say to Iran and Hezbollah, hey, time to return the favor. Hezbollah, Iranian regime, you have battle-hardened fighters as well who have fought in Syria and elsewhere across the Middle East, Iraq, uh, Yemen, Lebanon, where, where do we begin? Gaza with Iranian, Iranian technology and know-how going there as well to the various Iranian proxies across the region. So Russia may be saying right now to Iran and Hezbollah, hey, your ur- urban warfare know-how and, and different tactics that you've used in the streets across the Middle East could come in very handy right now to help us in Ukraine as Russia prepares major offensives on Ukrainian cities going in on the ground in places like Ukraine's capital, Kiev. So I do not think it's a stretch to suggest if Vladimir Putin, again, folks, a major story here, if Vladimir Putin and his defense minister on Russian state TV are openly calling and welcoming thousands of foreign fighters from the Middle East to join the fight on Russia's side, I think Syria, of course, But you have to think Iran and its proxies, which have such experience traveling across the Middle East and points beyond and getting involved in conflicts. Look, whether again it's Yemen, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, you see Iran's fingerprints. The head of the snake of all the chaos in the Middle East right now can be found in Tehran, courtesy of the Iranian regime. By the way, we've had obviously Iraqi Shia militiamen fighting in Syria. We've had Af- Shia fighters from Afghanistan and Pakistan, points that far away, coming to Syria to join the cause of Bashar al-Assad and fight alongside the Iranian regime. Will we have fighters like that similarly traveling now to Ukraine? Vladimir Putin just put the call out today, folks, a major development. The Iranian regime still seeking revenge for the death of the aforementioned Qasem Soleimani, the leader of Iran's Revolutionary Guards Quds Force, who, of course, was eliminated in January 2020 in a drone strike carried out or ordered by President Trump. Iran has been pining for revenge ever since. And now we have a, an explosive, no pun intended, report from earlier this week from the Washington Examiner. A Justice Department official revealed this to the Examiner, that the Iranian regime's Quds Force, the Revolutionary Guards Corps, that elite faction of the regime, has two operatives who I, I presume are on U.S. soil now, or have been on American soil, who have been plotting to assassinate a former Trump administration official, in particular John Bolton, the former National Security Advisor. Now, there have also been threats uh, towards the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Iran wants to avenge Soleimani's death still, and the orders came on down, according to this piece in the Washington Examiner, from Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei to kill a U.S. official, a Trump administration official in particular, because the Trump administration pushed very strong sanctions against Iran, and Khamenei believes that Bolton and Pompeo were at the forefront of that push. Now, the Biden administration knows about this plot, but according to this Washington Examiner piece, they have been hesitant to indict these two Iranians who are plotting assassinations against former U.S. officials because they don't want to halt the progress towards a new Iran nuclear deal. In essence, folks, the Biden team is worried that they'll upset the Iranian regime if they make this plot against John Bolton public. But don't look for the Biden administration to hold the Iranian regime accountable because, again, above all, is that desire to revive the Iran nuclear deal. Even as Iranian diplomats are at the negotiating table in Vienna, American diplomats are there as well, kind of looking through a crack in the door because at the behest of the Iranian regime, U.S. officials are not allowed to engage directly with Iranian officials in Vienna. So what you have is the Russian lead negotiator, uh, putting this whole deal together. Russia has taken the lead alongside its ally, Iran, by the way. Russia in the room, cobbling together this disastrous new deal, while American officials, as one U.S. official described it, uh, they're at the little kid's table outside looking through the peephole, a crack in the door to see what's happening as these negotiations 
unfold. Folks, we'll have much more on this story for you, I'm sure, in the days to come. Now, I know this is very tough information to swallow, what I shared with you today, extremely frustrating, but God Almighty still sits on the throne. Jesus is the answer. God is in control, and I am keeping all of this in prayer, so fear not. Have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Even as the waves are crashing and the winds are roaring, Jesus is in the boat with you. He's in control, so you can go into this weekend, even as the world seems to be collapsing around us, and you can have peace because of the Prince of Peace. Thanks so much for joining us here this week on The Watchman. Have a great weekend. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.